Now, a new study has found that sepsis kills more people each year than cancer. Commonly referred to as blood poisoning, it arises when an infection causes organ dysfunction or failure. And the World Health Organization has declared it an urgent global emergency. And this is in part because it's often mistaken for other things in its early stages and treated incorrectly, increasing the chances of patients dying. Let's take a look at the numbers. The new global study has found that the number of sepsis cases, almost 49 million in 2017, is double the figure previously estimated. Researchers say the condition was the likely cause of 11 million deaths worldwide in 2017 and that globally one person dies of sepsis every three seconds. Well, I'm joined by Dr Ron Daniels, who is founder of the UK Sepsis Trust. Ron, thank you very much for coming by. More deaths from sepsis than cancer. I mean, that is jaw-dropping. Well, it's chilling, isn't it? And we've got to take these figures with a degree of context. The reality is many of these people will not only have sepsis. They will have underlying conditions, which will include cancer, because such conditions can predispose. But because this is such a burdensome problem now, because the WHO is sitting up and taking notice, we now have to act at a national level. How is it that it has only emerged, the scale of it's only emerging at this point? Well, these are the best data that we've seen on sepsis to date, but they're still not perfect. And this is the problem. Out of nearly 200 countries studied, around nine or 10 countries had good enough data to really do an in-depth analysis. And that is not good enough in this century. We need better patient level data to better understand the problem. Just let's go back to the basics and remind us on what sepsis is and how it begins in a person's body. So sepsis is the way the body responds to an infection. So it's always triggered by an infection, but in sepsis, the immune system goes into overdrive. And if we don't stop it, that's what causes the organ damage. Now, what causes it will vary according to where we live. In high-income countries, it's more commonly things like pneumonia, water infections, or UTIs, as they're commonly known. In poorer countries, particularly in children, diarrheal illness, things like Shigella, really take over and create a huge burden. And this is an infection that goes into the bloodstream and it needs strong antibiotics quickly. Absolutely. In sepsis, every hour counts. And again, the response of governments in each nation around the world will vary according to their healthcare systems and the resource available. But what we need is public in every country that knows about sepsis and knows how to ask for help and when to ask for help and healthcare facilities that are as resilient as they can be, given the resources available, together with infection prevention, vaccination and so forth. Your charity deals with some truly heartbreaking stories uh, in this country in particular and, and one thinks if it's hard enough to recognise, treat and stop se sepsis in a country like the UK with its strong healthcare system, what it is like in poorer nations with no healthcare systems? Well absolutely and we've heard just this week of the tragic death of, of young Ollie, a Wiccan Wanderers fan who was 13 when he died of sepsis and he wasn't picked up. That's happening right now in a rich country like the United Kingdom. In sub-Saharan Africa and similar countries where many of these cases in children under five are taking place, it's Im unimaginable the heartache that families are going through. You mentioned how it can, be, it can begin in something which seems utterly trivial. Ron, you and I, we, you know that I had sepsis six months mm. ago and that's how we got talking online. And that was a water infection and it turned into something life-threatening within hours. But the difficulty was being diagnosed because at the very beginning it's it shows the same symptoms as flu and many many doctors can be telling you to go home and take paracetamol they they are not free to give out antibiotics as much perhaps as they could in this situation because we don't want to overuse them it's a hugely difficult situation for doctors to try and get the truth well, it really is, and no one's pretending sepsis is easy to diagnose. Mm. There's no one blood test, there's no one symptom that people report. It's hugely variable, and that's why what we need is a partnership between public in any country who are aware of sepsis and know when to ask, could it be sepsis, and health professionals who are well-trained are encouraged to look for it, and when they do suspect it, are empowered to act. And when you say they're empowered to act, I mean, do you, you mean assuming that in cases where people have a high fever and flu-like symptoms that it might be sepsis, giving them antibiotics straight away rather than waiting for test results, which may take several days. Mine took a couple of days before it was clear what was in my bloodstream. Absolutely. And we have to, of course, be careful with antibiotics, but these are the groups of patients for whom we must preserve our much-needed antibiotics. 
doctors, as you've said, don't want to give antibiotics out willy-nilly. They need to preserve them for those who need them most. So what they have to do is to look for people who are showing some signs of organ dysfunction or organ failure and definitely treat those people urgently. How optimistic are you that uh, awareness has, uh, is going to make a big difference around the world, not only in, in the countries with rich countries with good healthcare systems? Well, absolutely. We've seen awareness campaigns in rich countries, such as the United Kingdom, such as some states in North America, some areas of Australia, for example. But in poor countries as well, awareness can occur. Burkina Faso undertook a radio awareness campaign amongst its population, and that seemed to be associated with people presenting to healthcare earlier. So with limited resource, this still can be done. Dr Ron Daniels of the UK Sepsis Trust, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.